in college. Yeah. So you're learning about philosophy yes. and ethics and all of that. How yes. how did that lead you well, to your faith? As I and I, I have to qualify this, I always tell people I was the best of the bad kids. So I was hanging out with not the I was hanging out with bad kids, but of all of them, I was the one who was the least bad. Okay. And then I would also hang out with the good kids, but of the good kids, I was the worst. So I was always <laughs> causing scandal and all sorts of things. Got forgive all my poor friends that I led astray. But we, I, my bad friends were getting confirmed and they were going through RCIA and all these things that they uh -huh. hadn't done. And so I said, well, if these bums are getting confirmed. I should also go through the RCIA and get confirmed and receive my sacraments. And so a part of the process was you had to go on a retreat and going on the confirmation retreat, specifically during Eucharistic adoration, I had no idea. I didn't know Jesus was in the Eucharist. I didn't have any experience in adoration. And when they said, oh, we're gonna go to adoration. I said, what's going on? What's adoration? Oh, you're gonna look at Jesus. I'm like, what do you mean? A picture of Jesus or what are you talking about? Oh, uh -huh. no, you're gonna go stare at Jesus in the Eucharist. And I said, oh, hold on. What do I do during this? I don't wanna look like an idiot because I don't know, I didn't know any, anything, right? Uh huh. You just, and so I asked the, my philosophy professor who I trusted was there. And I said, Dr. Rebard, what do I do? Give me step one, step two, step three. And he said, just kneel there, look at the Eucharist and repeat the name of Jesus for one hour. Well, for however long. And I said, well, okay. So I knelt there for 10 minutes straight. I was like, Jesus, Jesus. And I'm staring at the Eucharist, uh -huh. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Eight minutes, I'm thinking, well, this is so dumb. <laughs> this is so dumb. And then I, I, I felt like I heard a voice say, my son, be quiet. Oh boy. When I said, oh, I'm going crazy for sure. Jesus, 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 Jesus. My son stopped. Jesus, Jesus. I was even louder, more emphatic because I thought I was going crazy. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden it felt like God put his finger into my soul and I just melted and I started crying and I was bawling and, and wow. I had a deep, deep, deep awareness of the real presence. And more importantly, I think that not only was he really present, but that he was present because he loved me and that his heart was there. Like the heart of God was being expressed to me in the Eucharist. And I had a deep understanding of the passion that it cost him to be present to me. Uh -huh. And so after that, emotionally, psychologically, the faith in the real presence was no longer a idea. It was real to me. And wow. immediately after there was some other friends, like I mentioned that were there. And I told the girl, I said that one of my better friends was there. I said, we've got to change. We, we have got to change. Like, what are you, why are you crying? I was like, that Jesus is really here. Wow. We have got to, we've, this is, we've got, but when I was saying we've got to change, I did not mean we've got to change our morals. I was only thinking in my mind, Jesus is really here. I need to visit him more often. Okay. So now I was a public sinner who would go to the chapel <laughs> every day. I'd go to the adoration. I'm not, we didn't have adoration, but whenever we did have adoration, I'd go there. Uh -huh. I'd just go to the chapel of St. Basil every single day. I'd be doing my homework in the chapel between uh -huh. classes I was in the chapel, but never did it enter my mind seriously that I need to change my behavior. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I was still, I was a bit in the eyes of my, my classmates, at least, I think, especially the good ones. I was the biggest hypocrite because I would say, and I would be there and I would uh -huh. even say to them, you need, you believe in Jesus and Eucharist. Yeah. You need to go to the church. You need to go to mass. There's mass every day. There's three times a day mass here at the University of St. Thomas. They don't have it anymore there. I don't think God helped them. But then they would say, look at you. How, how dare you tell me this? You're, <laughs> you, you're doing all these horrible things that the world tells us to do. You're a bad person. I said, I don't care. Jesus is there. So, so, the, so that initial time that you that hit you yeah. was that like a big jolt? It was oh. like melting. I can only explain it like, like if if you were a block, if you imagine a block of ice, and then uh -huh. you have one of those devices that you use to do a soldering, a yes. soldering iron. Have you ever used one of those? It's yes. really hot. Yes. If you were just to stick a soldering iron in an ice cube, the ice cube you would just have a hole in it, uh -huh. and that's what it felt like happened. That it was like a direct touch into my heart and everything from the inside out melted and I fell apart. And uh, I, I will never forget that. It will always be permanently etched in my mind and in, in my soul uh, that that's really Jesus. And uh, when you really believe that uh, and there's like a love and it was a gift, it was truly a gift. There's nothing I could have done other than recommend to people to just go to the chapel, uh -huh. repeat the holy name until you have a sense of his presence. 
But um, yeah, ever since then, things were not the same. 